Uh oh. So if you came here just to watch a rocket launch, then this video is over for you. But I do happen to know exactly what went wrong. So if you want to stick around, we'll talk about the details of what happened to this motor and why it failed. So this particular motor is currently using what we call our Gen 4 or fourth generation rocket nozzle. This is a one piece all steel nozzle assembly. It's a steel convergent with a steel orifice opening and a steel divergent. All one piece. It just drops in and then it's just retained in place by the PVC when you put it together. Now, as you can see, this one seems to have a little bit of a problem. So, it's superheated under the, the heat and the force of the rocket fuel and about one second into the burn it just completely melted all of the plastic that was around it. When this hit the ground and I took it and I shook it back and forth this nozzle literally was just flopping back and forth. There was nothing holding it in place other than the plastic that was below it was keeping it from actually falling out, but it wasn't retained at all. So, when that tipped off to the side, the rocket then tried to curve around, but at those speeds you just can't do that, and all the fins just ripped off. The ejection uh, charge exploded popping out the parachute which was destroyed because the rocket was still going extremely fast and then everything comes tumbling down. So let's take a little bit more look at this nozzle. I've cut the nozzle assembly out and this is what it is. It's made on the lathe out of a solid piece of steel. And the idea behind that was to come up with a nozzle design that's basically completely reusable. We have a smaller version of this that we use on our smallest motor called the Kiwi. It works great on that. So the idea was to try and develop it for the Super Monkey motor. But the Super Monkey has a lot more fuel in it. And you might wonder, well, why didn't this problem of retaining uh, and overheating not show up in our previous tests? So let's take a look at that. So previously we did two other Super Monkey tests. Our very first one that was just a proof of concept used uh, rockite anchoring cement for both the convergent and the divergent and just a, a steel washer in the center of that for the orifice size or the nozzle size. Um, so as you can see we get a lot of deterioration at the rockite and my thinking was that uh, if we get a lot of deterioration at the divergent side we may actually be losing some beneficial thrust out of the the rocket motor so we were trying to develop something that wasn't going to deteriorate the second one this is one um, there's a video of this second super monkey this is the one that we actually did a thrust test on the scale and we got a hundred pounds of thrust out of this now this one, we didn't get any kind of melting going on that we can see when we cut it open and took the nozzle out. A little tiny bit um, where the nozzle was actually retained in here, but extremely, extremely minor, especially compared to what we got on the launch. Now this one was sent up with this exact same nozzle, except just to save time, I didn't trim the outside. So it was a solid round piece of steel on the outside. I just did the convergent and divergent angles just to have a, a nice quick nozzle to work with. That's what was in here. And as you can guess it had a, a huge amount of excess steel because it was just a solid round piece of stock. That steel did get extremely hot. You couldn't touch it after the test for quite a while. Um, it discolored, a um, little rainbowing effect um, from the heat, um, but what the result there was is there was so much mass of steel that it acted like a heat sink and it just absorbed a lot of that heat rather than trying to transfer it directly out to this thin edge against the PVC plastic. So 
When it came time to actually doing a launch, I wanted this to be a lot lighter. So I put it on the lathe again and trimmed it down to its final shape. I took off about 66% of the steel. So this weighed about 300 grams when it was a solid round piece. This final piece weighs about 100 grams. So taking off two thirds of the steel also means that we don't have nearly the heat sinking capabilities on this. So as a result, it got super heated up here where the fuel was going in and just superheated this ring area that was against the PVC and just melted that super, super fast. We were about 0.3 of a second from a perfect launch. If it had held up for about a quarter to a third of a second more, that launch would have been perfect. So we were very close, but clearly this is not going to be a system that works with our Gen 4 nozzle for this much fuel. So, looking at a solution that we're going to use for the next launch. This is our third generation nozzle which still is a really good style nozzle, requires a bunch of work on the lathe as well, but it's basically a three-piece nozzle assembly. This is what it's made up of. It uses a cast iron pipe adapter. This particular one is quarter to three-eighths. The one for the Super Monkey is three-eighths to half. Uses just a washer that goes in there and then a bolt is trimmed down and threads down into there but that bolt is cut really short so the end result once you mill out the angle that you want in here um, cut down and drill out the bolt and shave the head down takes a lot of work but you end up with something that looks like that it has a really nice um, divergent angle on it does not have any kind of a convergent but it is completely reusable. So the way this is intended to work is that we take the coupling piece that's at the bottom of our motor which has a slip coupling on one side and the threads on the other side. This washer slips up nice and snug in the thread side and then you use a retaining ring. This is a steel one but I'm not sure whether I'm going to use a steel one or a PVC one. I like the steel one but it doesn't thread in very far into the PVC. The PVC one threads in quite a ways, get a better grip on there, but it's also PVC so a little concerned about the heat on that. So that threads in and you see we've got a a fairly good distance between that centering ring in the PVC and the top of our nozzle assembly and then we use a little shaping tool we pour in uh, rockite anchoring cement onto that and then put that down until it hits the centering ring and that will give us a little bit of a convergent angle we're not really getting a, a fantastic convergent angle, but I'm not worried about that. The idea behind the rockite anchoring cement is not so much to be a convergent, but more so to cover and be a heat shield for all the metal components in there. The rockite does get damaged pretty heavily from the burn, but not completely, so it should act as a pretty good heat shield in that environment. So I hope you enjoyed the flight. It was actually a really good launch. Um, just a little bit of a failure up at the top. Um, but hopefully we'll be back with another rocket very similar to that one. And we're going to give this motor another try. Thanks for watching.